Hey, my little pumpkins, and welcome to a Komodo Island. I feel like I have to say Komodo Island with like a with an Australian accent. Like, well, you know, Komodo dragons are originally from Australia, but um, you know, kind of reading up on them and even just looking at you know this design, which is heavily, heavily Animal Kingdom inspired. Um, you know, from what I've read. Just based on the numbers, it doesn't seem like they do too well in captivity. Reason being is, in the wild, Komodo dragons, like I read, and you guys can correct me on this, that their average lifespan in the wild is 50 years. So these things can live up to 50 years. In captivity, zoos, rehabilitation programs, whatever, the average lifespan is only nine years. So these guys, it doesn't seem like they thrive too well in captivity, but at the same time, they're on the endangered species list. And, you know, there are a lot of programs out there um, trying to help them. But yeah, definitely, uh, definitely a little interesting, a 40 year average lifespan difference um, than the ones that are actually you know, on Komodo Island and, uh, and you know, those, those different, uh, you know, Pacific Islands. So I thought that was very interesting. Um, but nonetheless, we went ahead and got something designed for them. Um, I think I will, I kind of, I'm kind of like, my inkling is to put this in Suyana. Like, I know I like, I wanted to do like a, a leaf kind of thing where we just jump in and there's no pressure and I just do a one-off build, which leaf is like the master of just jumping in and taking 30, 45 minutes to hammer out a, an exhibit and they come out awesome. So I was like, well, let me try that. And maybe I can use that in an existing park or a, an existing zoo out here somewhere. So I think that's what we're going to do. But Yes, I really, really took heavy inspiration from Animal Kingdom on this. And one of the things that I think really helped with this design and like mentally, mentally approaching this design is how small it is and how small I've contained it. And you guys know me that small is not in my vocabulary. <laughs> I, uh, I um, th these exhibits, they always tend to really, really grossly um, out extend what would be required. Um, even like with AZA accreditation or, you know, real zoos, these exhibits are not that large when you're actually at a zoo and you're experiencing these animals and you're, and you're looking at their enclosures, you even tend to think, my gosh, this is small. Like, is this all they need? Or is this all the space that was available when they decided to bring these when they decided to bring these guys in. So that is kind of what I went for on this. Make it a little more scaled back, make it a little more believable. And um, yeah, just not do this massive 300 acre exhibit for these Komodo dragons. And uh, I think it came out really, really well. Um, I, I forget who did this, who put this on the workshop, but I absolutely love these little rock walls. I actually love a bunch of the fencing um, that's in that pack. I'll try to make sure to link that um, in the description box below if you want to go looking for these uh, these kind of natural barriers. You'll also notice too um, here right uh, here in just a minute I will put in some almost like a little cave for them and I noticed they had those at uh, at Animal Kingdom as well. Just a little bit of a hiding spot. Um, the, the, they're big on giving them basking rocks, so they will come out in the sun and lay on these rocks. Um, but one thing, I did add one of my one of my large trees to the middle of the exhibit just because it looked a little like it was missing something. And I think that tree um, really just kind of, and I'll show you in the, I don't even know if you'll see it here in the, in the time lapse, but I'll show you when we jump over to real time. Um, it just, it just gave it that pop, uh, that, that kind of, I think was missing from this, the central area of this exhibit. Of course, you could make the argument that that lets more sun in and they would get up there on those hot rocks and, um, and all that. But nonetheless, I think this for a project that took in, if you watch this in real time, the OBS file was 24 minutes. So I built all of this in right at, just right under 30 minutes. I was even able to sneak you guys in a waterfall. And uh, yeah, so that's kind of where, that's kind of what I was aiming for with this. Just small, 
quick exhibit, just kind of get back in here, get a little practice going now that we know the Twilight Pack is coming and um, start building on some of these, uh, on some of this uh, motivation that I have from that recent Disney trip. Even when I got back, I just, I was feeling a little bit, but now that the hype is built back up for this Twilight Pack and, and you know, hopefully the new scenery pieces that we're going to get, you know, the, the release says 200 plus piece, scenery pieces, um, that'll really get us back in here and get us rolling. And, you know, the other thing is too, I've just felt like making videos again. Um, if you check my Instagram, I've kind of redid my office, decluttered some things, got the big couch out of here, uh, set my monitors back up for some streaming, hopefully in the next couple weeks. Um, and I just feel motivated again to be in here and create. And I think your space, like your your creation space and your gamer space or, you know, man cave, whatever you want to call it, um, I think that plays a big part mentally, you deciding if you want to create or not, or at least for me it does. And now that I kind of have this set up really, really cool in here, I feel like being in here again and, and creating YouTube videos and content and... Um, I just uh, hopefully, like I said, hopefully we are in for a fun winter coming up with uh, hopefully I can, you know, kind of keep this content creation going and keep some things, uh, keep some things in the pipeline. I definitely want to branch out. I know we always say this. I want to branch out and do other games and record some other things. And I think we'll do that, too. I mean, I know a majority of you guys are here for Planet Zoo, but I think you guys would stick around for other things, especially with the streaming I think the streaming opens the door for kind of trying more games than what would if just throwing a random video out here of seven days to die or, you know, something like that, where, you know, there'd be like 12 people that may that may watch. Everybody else is going to be like, ew. But nonetheless, I want to give some different games a try just so we don't get into that lull of a planet zoo burnout which doesn't help you guys either, because if you think about it, if you're only here for Planet Zoo and Planet Zoo burns me out, I completely stop making videos altogether. Whereas if you guys like come back here and you give other games chances, then I'm more likely to go back to Planet Zoo on a regular basis than feel like I'm only making content for Zoo. So it's kind of like if I get to play other games and you guys enjoy it, I don't just totally abandon Planet Zoo and YouTube and just play the games privately where you guys never get to see. Um, it's more so I get to share the gaming experience and the content creation just as a whole instead of only picking up Planet Zoo like once every three months when they... Uh, when they put a new DLC out. So, you know, that, that a lot of things factor into to my weirdness and what goes on in my head with this YouTube videos and, and content creation. But anyways, let's jump into the real time real quick. I'll show you how this uh, ultimately ended up working out. Probably spent another five minutes on this uh, off camera. So, but yeah, let's jump over there real quick and I'll show you. All right, guys, here is Komodo Island. This how it This is how it turned out and I think they like it. Really, really cool, guys. I do not build for them a lot, and uh, I think we could get them a really, really cool spot. We can pick them out a cool spot in Suyana, you know? Oh, wait a minute. This might be a good... This could be like a good thumbnail. Let me see if I can get us a... Good little shot. Park it right there for us a minute, buddy. There we go. Gotcha. So yeah, this is uh this is it. This is what I was thinking about. Just making this a little more contained. Um, we've kind of got the 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 island down here, kind of like the little cliff to keep them back. Um, from, you know, trying to come up and over and <laughs> out here where the guests are. And we've got our little waterfall kind of down here in our little tiny splash lagoon area. 
And uh, yeah, they've got a lot of different places to explore. They've got their bushes over here they can hide in. They can even come here into their little cave and almost get, you know, completely out of sight of the uh, of the of the guests if they want to. And doesn't this just look like a good Suyana build? Like, what if I could even bring this over into Suyana and see how this almost looks like a bridge? Make it a bridge and do another habitat for something on this side, you know, and kind of make it like a dual path habitat, kind of like the elephants and the lions are right now. You know me, anything, anything bridge like I love. So I'm, I'm all about adding some bridges and getting the guests in here. Uh oh, protesters and getting the guests in here as close as possible. And that is kind of what we tried to do with, uh, with Komodo Island here. So yeah, you guys have to let me know what you think. And don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you end up enjoying this video and subscribe to keep up with some more Planet Zoo mischief while I have it going. And uh, yeah, thank you guys. I will catch you in the next video. See ya!